Paul teaches that this receiving of the Holy Spirit, this seal, is to result. Let it be clear, he calls it the seal. He says in Ephesians 1, you were sealed, the seal. And I have noticed in different of the last books of the New Testament, how that new converts will be saying, I want the seal. Now, of course, some people in their translation would call it the being baptized in water. That's not a seal. It says in Ephesians, God sealed them. It says in Corinthians, you were sealed by God. God doesn't seal anybody through waters of baptism. Waters of baptism is natural. Where's the seal? They were talking about the Holy Ghost. So as we have said before, the seal in essence, as to certain aspects of it, is similar to what they did call baptized with the Holy Ghost in the book of Acts. So if you want to say baptized in the Holy Ghost, well, it turns out to be unscriptural, but you probably mean measure. It is what Paul meant, but oh no, Paul meant something far deeper. In relation to whether we call it the baptism of the Spirit or the seal, and we should say the seal, never the baptism of the Spirit, as I have explained, we drink. But with the baptism of the Spirit that they had in Acts chapter 2, they didn't do any drinking. There's no, no verse that says they drank. It says they were filled with the Holy Ghost. It says the Holy Ghost came upon them. So there is a certain similarity. But with the seal, it is more appropriate to emphasize that is the rivers of living water from within flowing out. Both could be called an immersion. Baptized with the Spirit means immersed. In the infilling and receiving of the Spirit and drinking so that it flows out, yes, you're immersed. But the immersion of the baptism of the Spirit means, as we were taught, you're plunged, plunged in. It, to immerse is to plunge. With the seal, we're not really plunged at all. With the seal, it's something God does within us. First, that is invisible, but second, that then becomes visible to others as we speak with other tongues. In Acts 2, God poured out. Once poured out, and he poured him out effusively, the Holy Spirit remains. He does not go back to heaven. He was always there throughout the book of Acts. As Jesus had said in my name, signs will follow. So with Peter, there is no mention of the gifts of the Spirit. You never hear a word from Peter about the gifts of the Spirit, nor from James or John, nor in the book of Acts. Paul teaches that this receiving of the Holy Spirit, this seal, is to result in a private and public prayer and praise in the Spirit, in other tongues, it is a result in gifts of the Spirit flowing out from the Holy Spirit within that we are to zealously and feverishly crave after till we have them. If we have them, we need to stir them up. Because when we stir them up, as we're told to do, as Paul said to Timothy, stir up the gift that is within you. We need to stir whatever gifts of the Holy Spirit have been within us, even once or twice. 
So those of you who have experienced gifts of the Holy Ghost, stir them up. Stir them up. But make sure you know the truth of the Gospel. With Peter, it's more for Israel at first. With Paul, it is Jews or Gentiles, servants or slaves, free men. With Paul, it is a flowing out, as Jesus said. Not with Peter. Paul teaches drinking. That results in being immersed into the body of Christ. As he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, that by one spirit we are baptized or immersed into the body of Christ. And that happens because we drink of the Spirit to be receive the Holy Spirit, to be filled with the Spirit, so that that same Spirit who then is in us immerses us in a spiritual manner that we cannot see, it's invisibly done, in the body of Christ, which is in invisible but supernatural. So this amounts to the fact, according to Paul, according to 1 Corinthians 12, that if you are not a receiver of the seal, if you are not a receiver of the Holy Ghost, as Paul did ask, and speak in other tongues, you are not in the body of Christ. You're in the household of God. You're in the people of God that you're not in the body of Christ. Now that will shock a lot of people. It w Actually, it applies to hundreds of millions of Christians. Christians, you're not in the body of Christ. The body of Christ in 1 Corinthians 12 to 14 acts supernaturally all the time based on first much prayer in other tongues and then secondly based on the exercise of the gifts of the Spirit in your meetings together before Christ. It is to result in the gifts of the Spirit that are prominent because the gifts of the Spirit are about Jesus Christ. The gifts of the Spirit are about the true Gospel. We need the supernatural operation of the gifts of the Spirit time after time, all the time. We need to feverishly hunger for it and receive with fervor, with fervor. We have to have fervor. I must have the exercise of the gifts of the Spirit. Now this is amazing. If you are filled with the Spirit, which means you pray in other tongues, you can do it any time, at will. You can suddenly just start speaking in other tongues. Why not just suddenly stir up the gift of the Spirit and start exercising it? Now many of us had done that in relation to prophecy. Maybe it happens all the time in relation to the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge, in relation to understanding the gospel and the heavenly matters. It happens continuously because it's there to bless people when you preach. But when it comes to heal the sick, even your own body, we just need to plunge in and do it. Now it is definite that the gifts of the Spirit operate on the basis that you do as is said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, he who prays in an unknown tongue edifies himself. We need to edify ourselves by praying much in other tongues. The more you pray in other tongues over the years, it kind of builds up as a bank account. We should continue praying in other tongues all our lives. 
Paul enumerates the gifts of the Spirit and their purpose, their miraculous use and, and in the body of Christ. Peter never does. But Peter does miracles and Paul does miracles. They both have gifts of the Spirit and Peter didn't know he had gifts of the Spirit. Paul did. Paul goes deeper than Peter. He calls it a seal. As we find in Thackler and other lost books of the Bible like Philip, the seal. Paul says you were sealed. He never says you were baptized with the Holy Ghost. He never said you received the baptism of the Holy Ghost in fire. He never says you received the baptism of the Holy Ghost in power. He never does. He calls it the seal. The body of Christ in 1 Corinthians 12 to 14 acts supernaturally all the time based on first much prayer in other tongues